There are hundreds, if not thousands of camping stoves out there, but which one should you choose? Well, today I'm gonna to run through the stoves that I've got, tell you the pros and cons of each, and hopefully help you make a decision. And I'm gonna kick off with these all-in-one cook kits. So this is a Jobsworth X2 stove. You can see it all packs in together. If I take the lid off, you get a pot stand to make it stable when it's all put together. You get a pan stand if you want to cook something in a frying pan on it. And then this is the stove section. So that goes onto your gas and then the pot just clips on to the stove like so. So this is a Jobsworth X2. These have been discontinued now. So I have got a APG version that I'll be testing out soon. And there's loads of other manufacturers out there. The most popular one or the most well-known one is probably Jetboil, but they're quite high-end in terms of price. You're looking at over hundred pounds for a stove. The Jobsworth X2, I paid 25 pounds for that, I think a couple of years ago. The APG one was 30 quid and there are quite a few around the sort of 40, 50 pound mark. I know Alpkit make one as well with their brew kit. So in terms of pros and cons, the thing I like about these is that everything packs together. You can fit your gas can inside there as well. They are really quick to boil water. You can cook pasta in them as well. This has got drain holes in the lid and they're relatively good in the wind because they've got these fins around the bottom that help to block some of the wind and the flame is down inside the stove. In terms of cons, well, it's quite a bulky piece of kit. It's a big size. It is relatively expensive compared to some of the other options that I'll go through as well. And what I use this for is trips and camps where I want to be able to make a quick dinner, whether it's just boiling up some water for a dehydrated meal or boiling up some pasta inside the pot. The next type of stove we're going to look at is a portable gas stove. So this is a BRS version. Again, there's hundreds of these on the market from Soto, MSR, loads and loads of unbranded ones on Amazon and eBay. You can pick these up for five or 10 pound, anything up to sort of 40, 50 pound again. So this just unfolds, screws onto your gas, and it gives you the burner there. And obviously you can sit a titanium pot or something like that on top of it. So this BRS one, you can get these for about 15 quid. It's really small, really light. I think these weigh 25 grams or something daft like that. When I use this, I pack it down into a little titanium pot with a small gas can as well. So everything fits inside one of the little titanium pots. In terms of cons for things like this, well, performance isn't great in the wind. If there is going to be wind where you are, you probably need to take a windshield or use your rucksack or something to shield it. They can be really noisy as well, or they are really noisy. So if you want a proper stealth camp and you don't want to make any noise, then that kind of rules out this type of stove. I use this when I'm going on camps where I want to stay really lightweight and keep a small pack size, and where I know that I'm only going to need to boil water for a dehydrated meal and nothing more advanced than that really. And then a slight tweak on those portable gas stoves is the remote canister stove. So I've got a fire maple one here, and the difference is that this pipe goes to your gas can. So if you're in really cold weather, you can turn your gas canister upside down and it goes through there as liquid and then turns to gas at the stove. This also gives you a really stable stove to work with because the feet spread really wide. The burner's a decent size on this. I really like this stove and I use this if I'm cooking anything on a pan, a frying pan or anything like that. Cons of this one, it's obviously quite a lot bigger than the BRS one that I just showed you, but it still does fold down. So these legs fold in and then you can wrap the tube around it and put it back in its bag like that. If it's really, really cold weather or I want to get a little bit creative with my cooking, I'll take my remote canister stove. Next up, we've got what is a lot of people's favorite and it's the alcohol stove. The most well-known of these is the Trangia and it's basically just a tin that you pour alcohol into, you light it, and then that gives you a flame that lasts long enough for you to boil water, cook food, do whatever you need to do with it. So at their most basic, they are just a tin. You can make your own. There's loads of videos on YouTube about how to make your own from a beer can or a pop can. Or you can buy them as a kit with a load of pans and a frying pan and that sort of stuff. This is a Lixardo one that I bought from AliExpress. So it just comes with the stove itself, a little lid that you can use to put the stove out. And it came with a pot stand as well. So you can put that in there and then rest your pan on top. So like I said, a lot of people really like the alcohol stoves. They're really quiet, they're pretty much silent. So if you are on a stealth camp or you don't want to make noise and you just want to enjoy your environment, 
alcohol stoves are definitely worth a look. They're impossible to break, there's no moving parts or anything like that. And they are really cheap, so like I said, you can make your own from an old can. This Lixardo one with the pot stand cost me seven pound, I think, or something daft like that. In terms of cons, well, they are really slow. So you don't get loads and loads of heat from them, but they will boil water, you can cook on them. It might just take eight to 10 minutes to boil the water that you need to make a meal or make a drink. Now, if you're in the outdoors and you're chilling out on a camp, you probably don't care that it takes that long because you'll be happy to wait and it's part of the experience. The other con I think is you have to transport the fuel. So you obviously need an alcohol fuel and you can take it around in a sort of Nalgene bottle like this. I would keep that wrapped in a sort of carrier bag or a Ziploc bag as well, just in case it leaked. It has never leaked on me. Or you can buy proper fuel bottles that are designed for carrying alcohol fuel, but they are, I think they're about 15 quid. so take that into account if you want to try one of these stoves. A similar kind of thing to the alcohol stove is the pocket gel stove. So this is a BCB that you might have seen in some of my previous videos. It folds down really small. This can fit three fuel blocks into it and you unfold it. There's little nibs or dints in the metal there that keep that in place. And then you get these little gel blocks. Put a gel block in the middle there, light it, and then you stand your pot on top of the stand. So these, again, they're really simple, no moving parts really, impossible to break. Um, they're really cheap. So I think I paid six pound or seven pound for a kit that came with the stove, do a little windshield inside it, six fuel blocks and a fire steel as well. So everything you need to get started for six or seven quid. I would say these are more limited to just boiling up a cup of water for a meal or a drink. I wouldn't want to cook a full meal on a frying pan with one of those, you'd be there forever. I find that one of the fuel blocks lasts just long enough to boil a titanium mug full of water. I use my BCB stove mainly for day hikes where I'm just out for the day and I want to make a hot drink while I'm out because it just fits nicely into my day bag. I'm not bothered about cooking a big meal or anything like that, so that's ideal for that sort of use. Then you've got wood burning stoves. So this is a titanium stove from Wild Camping International. You can see I've already used it because it's covered in soot and it's got some of the coloring that you get on titanium. So these are crazy light. They pack down really small. So all of the sides come apart and you can fold it down into what is essentially a little envelope. So you can just slide it down the back of your bag. Fuel is free because you can just grab twigs and wood from your surroundings. And you also get extra man points because you're creating a real fire. You essentially just put twigs and fuel through the hole at the front, light it, and then put your pan or pot or whatever you're cooking with on top. In terms of cons for these, well, they do get quite messy. They get covered in soot, depending on obviously the fuel that you're burning and how long you let it burn for. And obviously if you are wild camping, you might not be in a spot where it's okay to have a fire. And you have to gather and process the fuel that you're gonna use for the stove as well. So if you set your camp up and you're starving or you want a quick drink, you can't because you've got to get all your twigs ready. You've got to get the fire going and then build it up to a point where you can start cooking with it. For me, these are all about the experience. I've only used this a couple of times, but it is really nice to build your own fire and take the time to do that and then cook on it. It's a totally different experience to using one of the other stoves where you just switch it on and boil some water up. So these are just some of the stoves I've got. As I said, there's loads out there, so it's worth having a look around and experimenting to see what works for you. Drop us a comment below and let us know what your go-to stove is and why, and I'll catch you next time.